Stoop Stories. Welcome, Southwind, to another episode of Stoop Stories. Josh Heron, CEO, LeDrew Morrell, executive business coach here at Southwind. We're excited to announce that Stoop Stories is back in action and we'll be reporting to you a new podcast every single month. Thanks for all of the nudges and snudges. We are finally off the stoop and back in the studio. So for today, we've got a special episode where we're highlighting two of our very best teammates in all of the organization. Uh, so I'm gonna let Josh tell you a little bit about our teammates here. Yeah, so first off, let me uh, take just a quick step back here. Um, you know, we, we've been doing stoop stories now for a couple of years, right? And LeDrew and I have really enjoyed the time spent you know, together talking about life and business and all of the things in between. Um, but every now and then you get a rare opportunity to put uh, a couple people in front of you know, the rest of uh, the listeners here. And when you, when you do this, when you get this opportunity, you really want to take advantage of it because uh, these two guys are truly special. And people I want you guys to get to know because this won't be the last you've heard from either one of these guys. So, uh, We just recently acquired a business in Denver. And we've uh, kind of been on an acquisition spree of, of late, but this is a really special acquisition because Denver is a business that we've always looked at and really thought was a great market, great opportunity, great potential, great people on the ground. And when we got the opportunity to do it, we were looking for who we thought would be the best to lead this company. And it was a pretty, e it was actually pretty easy to determine who the best people were to lead it. And so we've got two of those people here with us today. Uh, Garrick from coastal, well, from Omaha to coastal ports now to Denver and Casey from Salt Lake City to Naples to Denver. Uh, both of these guys are incredible leaders and, and people we really think highly of. I've said this before, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, Garrick's a f uh, one of the finest leaders I've had the opportunity to be around. And then Casey Brown, man, the time I've been able to spend with Casey and the type of person he is, the quality of human being, you know, if I, my son, his name's Elijah, and if he was getting a job today, and he, was, he said, Dad, I'm going to get a job and I'm going to work at 1-800-GOT-JUNK. I would put them with these two guys because I know they'll do a fantastic job. Not only creating an environment that is, you know, that is suitable for growth, but also a place to learn and develop skills. And so I'm really just honored to be on the on the call with these guys today, and and looking forward to hearing what they have to say because we've curated some questions for them. Without a doubt, believability rating through the roof by both of these teammates. So. Uh, thank you so much for joining the podcast today. So we have a wide variety of questions that we'll ask, some about what it takes, some about leadership, and some about just how you process and think about life itself so that you can uh, execute your goals and dreams. So uh, why don't you say we get started? I think that'd be great. All right. So I've um, got a question here. First up, you know, what was the most unexpected challenge you faced as you moved up through the ranks within the company? Uh, Garrick, we'll start with you there. I would say the most the the most unexpected challenge for me as I was rising uh, would definitely be um, learning new roles that I didn't anticipate I would have to learn as fast as I did. Because um, when I moved to Coastal Ports, I was actually moving out there to be an infield team trainer, and uh, it didn't take too long before Ladrew was like, "All right, so you got to pick a role, man. DOPD, DOO." So, I mean. I just I had to learn it quickly because um, I wanted to do a good job for the team that was out there, and um, and I had to truly care about the role. So I chose DOPD because you know I'm all about people. I love people. Um, I love seeing people grow. I love seeing people learn and actually when when that click happens and they actually truly get it. So it was it was no like hands down easiest choice. I, I had to be a DOPD. Yeah, Case, how would you respond to that question? Yeah, I'd say the biggest challenge by far, and, and I, I think in any business, uh, it's also the most rewarding part, though, is is people. And, and I include myself in that, right? Like starting with me, like at first, I was my own biggest challenge and just learning to lead myself and, and manage my own life appropriately so I could be there for my team. And then also learning to, you know, learning to view people in the right lens. There's like 
there's an optimistic way of viewing people and there's a pessimistic way of viewing people. And, and it turns out that, you know, like whether the people are the biggest challenge or not, if you put your faith in them, like they always rise to the occasion and they always do incredible things. And I've been fortunate enough to work with quite a few of those types of people who, who go above and beyond. Well, let's, let's take a step back and ask, I just want to ask you, Casey, and for, and for you, Gareth, talk to me about the, the self uh, component of like dealing with challenges, you know, because Casey, I hear you loud and clear. Hey, I had to learn how to, you know, put myself in situations that, w- that benefited, uh, that, were, that you were able to, you know, get some benefit from. So that leads me to that, that well... I would say that probably means that there was a time in your life where you weren't who you are today. And Garrick, I'm assuming the same for you. You guys aren't, weren't always who you are today. These are some young leaders that are doing a tremendous job, but they weren't always like this. So let's talk about who you used to be and what it took for you to get to who you are today. Yeah. Um, you know, so in my previous life, I was, you know, if I can be vulnerable, a low self-confidence, low self-worth, low discipline uh, type of individual. And, you know, meeting my now wife helped with that significantly. She's, in, she's incredible and she's done so much to help me. But also, you know, the level of mentorship that I've gotten has helped me a lot there. But I think that a lot of people have that inside of them, that low self-worth, because as human beings, we judge ourselves based off of what we have internally and judge others based off of what they have externally. And the problem with that is you know all your own demons. You know all of the the thoughts that you think and all of the times you were this close to quitting, whether you quit or not, you know those demons. And so for me, in order to lead myself properly and like to go through the transitions that I've gone through in my life and, and be who I am today, I had to start like one, learning to love myself and, and learning to accept myself for some of those demons and just like pick pick some things that I'm going to work on I'm going to do my best at and like I don't have to tie my self-worth up in those things I can I can just focus outward and focus on helping people rather than focus on my own deficiencies gun of the runner to you sir yep so I'd say uh, who I used to be um, in my previous life I was definitely a lot of the same as Casey. Um, I, w- I wasn't as confident. Um, I, w- I definitely didn't have as much drive as I do um, on this day. I definitely um, would I'd wake up, get out of bed without like a sense of direction. Like I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And um, you know, Southland was my first real leadership role. I always kind of felt like a leader uh, when I was younger, but I was I wasn't a leader. Um, but just where I started at and like where I'm at now, it took so many other people besides me um, for me to even get that kind of information to become this kind of person. Um, so many great mentors. Um, I, I, I wasn't a very good planner. I didn't plan anything. So I, I would just say I would just wake up, get out of the bed and just go with the flow. Just let whatever happened to me happen to me. So, um, First off, you guys are both turned into fantastic leaders. So that should give anybody who's not where they want to be hope because you're not actually born like Casey and Garrick, you know, or like LeDrew. That's something you develop over a period of time. And, you know, what what I would be curious to hear is, you know, Casey, you kind of thought or you kind of said, you know, my marrying my wife or meeting my wife, meeting Gabby was a kind of a turning point, you know, what else was a turning point where you realized that you weren't ever going to live your life like you used to live it? Yeah, so I, I have a couple. So the birth of our first child, um, Gabby and I, you know, that happened when I was pretty young. So like I dropped out of high school and like knew from then on I had to I live a little bit of different life. Um, but then the other one was you know, Southwind and, you know, more specifically Bryce Atagi coming out to Salt Lake City, you know, he, he gave me a phone call and he was the first person outside of my wife to like truly believe in me and tell me that like there were big things coming my way and that they had plans to help me get there. And so that level of belief from somebody else 
was a major turning point in my life where like from then on I was committed to becoming a general manager within the organization, regardless of what it meant, like benefits to me, because I saw what Bryce could do to benefit others. And so, uh, you know, I, I never really asked, you know, what's in it for me, although some of those things were motivators for sure. But I always knew I wanted it regardless, because, man, the impact a leader can have on many people is such a worthwhile thing to chase after. Um, I'd say that there are quite a few um, different ones that do come to mind. Uh, but the one that truly stands out to me where I knew like I going forward, I'm going to be a certain type of individual would 100 percent be when, you know, Coach Pop, Jake Papelka, my man, he uh, he came to Omaha and, you know, he inspired us when he was there. He was only there for two days. And, you know, I used to call that team the Omaha team. I said, we're only going to get one year to do this, what we're doing. So we got to make this shit count. And uh, but he came there. He motivated us. He left us with one with one thing. Um, I want Omaha to, to be known for creating leaders, uh, great leaders. He said that can get sent across the country and run several businesses. And um, just what the team wanted, like we wanted that as a whole so bad. And um, I just knew like I had to be my best me for those guys to also do what they want to do and all of us achieve like our dream. You know, for all the leaders that are on the that, that are listening right now or tuning in, you know, I think it's important that we recognize the impact that leadership can have. Because you have two people that we're talking to get with Garrick and Casey, and they've been inspired. They were inspired by not something, but really someone, mm -hmm. and it's propelled them to like pretty incredible heights. Um, and they're both like really decorated leaders in this organization. So. I think it's just really, I think as we reflect back, we have to recognize the impact that leadership can make in, you know, the trajectory of a human being's life. And, and then like really understand like the stakes and how high the stakes are. Cause you either do that or you don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Really well said. You know, I think this is a great opportunity for us to do a couple things. You know, you both alluded to seeing the best in someone and helping cultivate the leader that's inside of them. So I want us to talk about how to do that, but I want to give everyone a Southwind tip in case we have some non-Southwinders listening mm -hmm. in. Uh, you know, at Southwind, we believe in high impact activity and high impact activity or HIA creates great output. Uh, but we know in this organization that true high impact activity involves human connection. Mm -hmm. There has to be people involved for it to be high impact. So what you're doing behind your desk and your computer by yourself, that's not HIA, but the things that you've heard today from these great leaders uh, that's true, the true essence of, of HIA. And success leaves clues. There have been several great clues uh, shared from these great leaders. But we'd love for you guys to speak to what it takes to see the best in an individual that uh, no matter where they're at when they come into the organization, but to see what they're capable of and what does it take to bring that out of them in your experience? Yeah, um, you know, I think that what it takes to see the best in somebody is to like process your emotional responses, but then like set them aside, right? Like I think that the human emotional response is a very worthwhile part of life. I wouldn't want to live a life without it, but I also think that it takes you down a, a path that can lead you to separate connections with people. And so, you know, every day people are walking in and, and doing any number of things right and and i'm going to have a negative reaction to some of those things that's, that's guaranteed i'm going to have a negative emotional response to some of those things and what i need to recognize is that somebody else is going to have a negative emotional response to some of the things that i'm going to do we're all trying to to do what we believe is best nobody's walking in and trying to do something malicious or nobody walks in and wants to do a bad job right like i just need to recognize that we're not there and so the best thing to see the best in somebody else is to take ownership of, of my role. What part did I play in this and how can I best help this person? And if, if I'm going to help somebody to the best of my abilities, almost always they will show their true colors and, and almost always their true colors are very, very incredible. Something like mind blowing. I've seen people who I have had issue with. I've seen them do things greater than what I'm capable of many, many times. 
And it turned out that the issue was the fact that I am the one who had an issue. And so that's all it is. It's just set aside the emotional response, think objectively and think in terms of service rather than what's in it for me. I would say um, in order to see someone like for the best that they are, see the best in them, um, I think you have to 100% be self-aware. Like you have to know yourself that you, like I'm not perfect. You know, I'm try, I am try hard every single day and I, I try my best, but no matter what, it'll never be perfect. So just you knowing yourself that you're not perfect, that allows you to, to come to that person from a frame of, okay, hey, maybe in this area you're not good right now, but we can get there. You know, you got to start somewhere. But um, in order to, to, to bring out the best in someone, I feel like for one, you got, you got to be intentional. Like you got to know them. Like you got to really know your guys because if, if you just treat them like a number when they come through that door, they don't want to work for you. They don't want to, they don't want to make you proud in the field. They don't want, they don't even care about your shout outs. Um, so I think that you, you definitely have to know your people um, and you have, you have to be authentic about it. Like you can't just go up to them and be like, man, those, those Nikes are nice, man. Not, not really mean it. Like you got to truly mean the things that you say and go out of your way to, to find those things that you actually, that you actually mean. Like you can't be bullshit. Mm. Well, you know, what I loved about what Garrick just said there, and I think people, uh, you know, we, we preach engagement a lot here. There's a difference between relational engagement and transactional engagement. Mm -hmm. And I, and, th and there's a difference you can see in the, the culture and the performance of a team that has a relational leader. And you can see the culture and performance of the team with a transactional leader. And so to, to Garrick's point and to Casey's point, you know, the, the authenticity that comes from truly caring about another person, that's the only way to really connect. Mm -hmm. And if you connect, that's the only way to truly help them get the best out of themselves because you can't get it out of them, only they can get it out of them. And so when, you, when you're, uh, you're thinking about that, when you're having the opportunity to lead, you know, I think it's always good to do some reflection and think about how you're connecting. And, you know, I know selfishly, I think about myself and I think about times where I haven't done a great job of that and the way it feels for the team uh, and how it can feel like just a job. But if you're going to start a movement, it's got to be more than a job. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, my, this is a very impactful episode. You know, as, as these leaders express what they have said, I see in, in both of them their ability to go to the stoop with someone else there sit down next to them, put their arm around them and say, hey, it's okay, man, we can do this. Mm -hmm. I've been here before and I know what it takes and I'm here to help you, mm -hmm. not to make fun of you, not to kick you down. It's okay and I've got your back. What do you say, let's do this? And that's opened up the door and put them in the position that they're in and allows their teams to generate the type of output that you see. And yeah, which that, hold on with that type of output output is world class out, output from these guys without it. With, yeah, not to, Look, to be objective, 30 uh, percent EBITDA margins on Casey's business in Naples while he was come there. on now and franchise of the year without it. Oh, we can keep going. Put some respect on his name. Yeah, two times. And, and, and Garrett, <laughs> you know, 100, 100 club, which means, man, he's a guy of service to yeah. his teammates and the community that he serves. And, you know, we couldn't be luckier to have you. Uh, as, as executives on our team. You know, what, what I would say next, would, would love to hear about what you guys believe is possible, you know, prior to entering this organization and now, because at Southwind, we believe that anything is possible. What does that mean to you today? Yeah, um, so I did not believe that anything was possible prior to being part of the organization. You know, I, I believed that I had one path in life. And I, you know, I spoke about that a tiny bit earlier. Like I said that when my first daughter was born, I dropped out of high school. And, you know, like at that point in time, I believed that I knew exactly what was ahead of me. Uh, and it wasn't glamorous. It wasn't service to others. I thought that I was just going to work all day, every day until I had enough to pay for diapers. And that was what was going to be ahead of me through every transitioning point. But now I believe in 
human potential. And I believe that human potential is in every single person. So I believe that that I'm capable of anything. I, I believe that Garrick is capable of anything. That's that's easy to say, but I believe that anybody, no matter what, like what point in their life, whether they're on the stoop or not, is capable of great things as long as they they have the mind and the mental fortitude for it, right? Which which nobody's born with the mind and the mental fortitude for it. You've got to develop that, which means it really is open to anybody. Like the human mind is is the most powerful thing on this planet. Uh, and so, you know, my goal is to take care of mine so that I can help other people take care of theirs and achieve what they've always wanted to achieve. I would, I would definitely say uh, prior to this, prior to uh, being with Southwind, I, de I definitely believed anything was possible. But the thing is, I didn't, like there was a problem with it because I didn't have the right mindset of how anything possible is achieved because I thought that like I could do anything that I wanted for sure. But the thing is like, anything's only possible when it's involving a team like you have to have a team around you like to make anything happen like you can't make anything happen by yourself but when you have the right people around you in the right spots that's when anything is possible is truly achievable so i definitely believed it before southwind but how to get there i didn't know i didn't know the, the correct way yeah, well said. Um, you know, b before we go, I think the listeners have to hear about what leadership is, you know, to you, what it means to you from your perspective, based on your experiences, so they can help them along their leadership journey. So, uh, Case, we'll start with you. Uh, what is the true essence of leadership? So, um, you know, I, I believe, and, and maybe I'm, I'm a little big headed for this, but I believe that I have the secret to life figured out and that includes like leadership but you know like that's to me the essence of life anyways and so i believe it's two things and today we had a, a town hall here at southwind and i i heard these two things maybe three things come up in just about every single answer and that's one is is effort right like from a from a leadership position you've got to be willing to put in the effort that's required to get the desired outcome to help the people who need your help. Number two is service to others. I think I think that that really should be number one. Service to others is by far the most important thing that we can do in our entire life, and especially in leadership. Um, you know, and, and I think the last one is just connection. You know, being willing to connect with other people, taking care of relationships, being relational not for the sake of generating engagement but for the sake of you know again helping other people serving other people and being a part of something i loved what garrick said about needing a team around you you know that that is without a doubt it and i would say that the the essence of leadership to me i'm going to say what i thought it used to be because i used to think that a leader was was someone who just did everything um, but I mean, in all actuality, that would, that's incorrect. Um, a true leader is someone who can, you know, they can do the work, but they empower the people around them that they're training every day or working bes like beside them every day. They empower those people to eventually move and help out on those roles so that those people can, you know, become more of a Swiss army knife. They can, they can jump into multiple roles. So I think that with, when it comes to, to leadership, obviously intention and out, intentionality, uh, being authentic, um, empathy for sure. You got you got to like truly be able to care about people, and always doing the hard thing. Like you can't you can't skip steps if you want to. If you, if you want to truly achieve something special, you just can't skip or cut corners. It just it just doesn't work that way. Well, we got to tell you, couldn't be more proud of you. Thank you guys so much for joining us on today's podcast. One second, real quick. And just to be clear, none of these guys won the lottery. They weren't given any of this. N nobody was gifted success here. They all earned it. 
every step of the way and continue to earn it today. So super proud of the work that you guys have done and, and we're grateful to be partnered with you on this mission. Yeah, why don't you tell the people, uh, now that you've been on the podcast, they're probably gonna be looking at your business. What can they expect to see when they look up the Denver Boulder business there in 1-800-GOT-JUNK? Tell them, Gek, we're going to number one, so just watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't have it any other way. Wow. Well, thank you guys so much uh, for making this such a great podcast. Uh, impact has been tremendous in the organization and on today's episode. So thank you so much. Get off the stoop. Get off the stoop. Stoop stories.